What's going on everybody? I'm Joe. This is So You Want a Crypto. Remember, the more you crypto, the more you know. And today, Ubix Network. It's been a couple weeks since I talked about it, and mostly because uh, last time we talked, we knew that there was some projects that they'd announced, which would be coming up towards the end of the year, early 2022. We knew it's going to be hopefully uh, moving into more marketing and getting the word out of Ubix Network. And that's basically where we're at now, and that's what we've done. So we figured we'd update on that. All right, so first of all, when you want to look at the Ubix network, the numbers are on ubix.network, 39.8 million. Come down, scroll down about halfway. You'll see right here, market cap, $39.8 million. Circulation, $38.2 billion uh, transferred, and volume is... 24 hour USD, $512,000. The reason I point that out is because when you go to CoinGecko, they do not list either, like their market cap for, the Ubix network is not even listed. Circulating supply, not it's not also listed, right? And now when you see this Ubix network, UBX on, both CoinGecko and on CoinMarketCap. Uh, CoinMarketCap does give you a little more information, not that it's better, but $47 million market cap is what they are listing here. They got their diluted and they say there's a 45.56 billion UBX circulating supply with a max of a trillion, uh, which we know that when we looked back over here, that's not what's going on. Okay. Both of these are the wrapped UBX. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we look, we can see under contracts that it is not the T10 native coin that will be on the UBX network, the UBX network. The UBX that you will stake, the UBX that you will get the airdrops with, uh, the Make Me Money UB stake that will be uh, rebranded and all that. It's not going to be the Ethereum one if you want to get the rewards. And this is the important part. And uh, the reason I bring this up is because we have, and I see this a lot, Z, what, SERP, C-Y-R-P, asked, can someone make a video how to send UBSN token to wallet and how to withdraw it if you want to resell it again? So how can I take my UBSN, and it's the same for UBX, put it into the UBKiri network, which is the UBX network native, the T10, and then bring that back out into the ERC20, and then sell it, put it back on Qcoin, do what I want to do, right? Okay, so let's let's look at that. Let's go back just real quick again, and let's look at CoinGecko and see kind of the movement. And what are we talking about with the UBX? And this is the ERC20, uh, and they're pegged one to one, so they're the same charts, right? When you you're just wrapping it and unwrapping it from the network back and forth to the Ethereum network. Okay, we had a pretty good pump recently, which was uh, 0.004, and now we've had like a 30% growth in like the last 24 hours. We've doubled in the last two weeks on Ubix, being down here, and we have tons and tons of room to grow. Are you too late to get into this project? No, you're not. Should you research it on your own? Yes, you should. And what you're gonna find out is that they want to try and avoid or mitigate as much of this volatility as they can by getting into the real estate and construction network. Uh, that's the projects that they want to really focus on. And we can also, and I'll get into Silent Notary, there may be some IoT stuff in there possibly. There's some hints like breadcrumbs throughout different white papers. All right, so let's get to this question. Can and what do I do? Uh, can someone, yeah, I'm doing it right now, but what, what do I got to do? You need two wallets. And if we go to UBKiri, you have an Ethereum wallet, which doesn't show up here because I haven't created one because I had this key. Anyway, long story short, I lost it. UBX, these are my two UBX wallets that are in here. And this, I would create an Ethereum wallet. This is the T10 native UBX. UBX. And then I would have to wrap this to the Ethereum wallet to send it on to the Ethereum network, right? Okay. So we talked about the PR in the beginning, and one of those things, Brian, Brian has been basically, you know, their PR. He's been the guy answering questions and doing a whole bunch. So, you know, kudos to Brian. He's really kept this thing 
uh, alive in a lot of places. They've added Vadimus 01, right here, Vadimus. And uh, let's see, here is his Twitter. And then here's the announcement from Ubix. Silent Notary, UBSN, and Ubix Network introduced new PR marketing director. Here's some contact information. This was yesterday. His team is responsible for the tasks of combining marketing and communication functions, developing a strategy for productive promotion in digital channels, building a brand platform, and bringing the network to a new level. Uh, you can read through this. and. We know real quick, Ubix is a DAG hybrid network. Uh, what is it? I think it's JNode hybrid. I get in trouble because when I say DAG, I, sometimes I, I will call it a directional. And then every, I have the uh, crypto Freudian slip and say decentralized. It's a directed acyclic graph. And if there's a difference between directed and directional as far as anything mathematical into this, I'd be curious to know. Comment below. But anyway, it's a directed acyclic graph directed means it goes that way it's kind of like a blockchain but instead of having to fill each block before it can move on it could actually change some of the function where it could circumvent blocks before it re uh, puts transactions back onto the network and acyclic means it can't circle back on itself it's only going to go in one direction and then you know the graph version so real quick that's what that is i'll put a link uh, in the above for the videos and then I'll also put all of these uh, links that I'm talking about in the description below so UBSN and the Ubix network are facing ambitious goals we're going to actively grow and attract new client partners and that's this whole end of the year early next year talked about maybe two or three projects coming in uh, so here's your UbiKiri UbiKiri now this is your central hub this is your WeChat like super app where you're going to find everything that you need onto the Ubix network. Your profile, your wallets, different contracts and what's going on. You also have your applications. Under applications is where we're going to find Silent Notary, the Ubix Exchange, and then probably later you'll see stuff like the Ubix Vault and we'll get into that here sh very shortly. So let's go to Silent Notary. Decentralized notary system, multi-platform, ultimate UI, global legal coverage, you can check this out. We're going to go right into the, so this link right here, this will be the white paper, I guess, light, you could call it. It's kind of the web version. Uh, but let's just jump straight to the actual white paper. So when we get into the white paper, it says Silent Notary is a multi, multi-platform, like Lilu Dallas multi -pulp. Decentralized service for the confirmation of existence. So what they want to do is make it so you can take pictures, chats, whatever, and turn it into legal evidence on the blockchain through ubix and through ethereum and possibly beyond uh i'm not going to cover all of this i've highlighted a few sections that i really want to get into but um there's some examples of what you can do and i think most they're getting this is the the mobile application and you can check out these links and it's pretty interesting the light stamp technology this is what they use to create your legal evidence here we go so the princ principal legal scheme of silent notary right here you have an event you have a recording device your phone who knows maybe it'll be uh google glasses in the future who whatever uh you'll take that and it turns it into a digital file which was then hashed and turned into a smart contract that's recorded on the blockchain for legal evidence that's like the down and dirty for silent notary that's what they want to do and they want to do this on any kind of digital platform so multi-platform concept here's what we want to get into it is now very expensive and almost impossible to use Ethereum to certify data flows from IoT devices, but in this case, we can use a solution such as a DAG-based Ubix network integrated blockchains. So this is kind of one of those little breadcrumbs where it's maybe, you know, will expand into IoT. And I think they're just working on anybody that, you know, as contracts come along, they try to fulfill those. Currently, Ubix network is a platform, or is the main platform for data recording since Ubix network is actually a set of user-created integrated blockchains a special silent notary integrated blockchain with consolium id equals four was created for silent notary project um, in addition to the silent notary blockchain the users can also deploy data to the ethereum blockchain and that's why you have because in 
another question I've seen is, well, why do you have two coins? Why do you have the T10 Ubix or Silent Notary for the Ubix network? Then why do you have it on the Ethereum as well? And that's because you'll need some for the Ethereum. Some, you know, depends on where you're working from, what you're doing. It's you'll need the Ethereum stuff to do Ethereum transactions, and you'll need the UBX to do UBX fees on the UBX network. You'll need UBSN. Um, kind of like everything else on it you know it's the same principle it's its own network so the UBSN tokens the system tokens here and after referred to as UBSN or tokens so now the, these are tokens the UBSN are going to be tokens on both the Ethereum network and on the UBX network now the UBX on the UBX T10 network is going to be a coin right kind of like Bitcoin because it's the native for coin for that network and then these others are tokens on that native network hopefully that's and if I'm wrong and I'm in misinterpreting that please comment below and let me know but that is my interpretation of this whole events and I'm trying to make sure that I put out the, the right information because there is a lot of questions and it is a little confusing so the there are uh, and there's a typo right here by the way issued a limited number so and it says one eight so that's a hundred and eighty six billion four hundred and sixty two million eight hundred and twelve thousand fifty one tokens are used to organize the interaction among the ecosystem participants the main smart contracts for its operation requires UBSN only the UBSN token holder can use the services of the contract the main silent notary contract was developed and deployed on the ethereum blockchain and available to users with this address it's the same address that you'll see right here on um, coin market cap and on coin gecko in the future new contracts can be deployed but any new contract will be able to accept UBSN tokens and here's the the formula for the rate if you want to figure it out here's an example if a basic cost of a certification equals a half US dollar and the USD exchange or Ethereum exchange rate is 1000 and you need 500 UBSN um, to execute the main contract, the service provider needs to transfer a certain number of SNTR tokens to Silent Notary. And I'm guessing that's going to be UBSN. Uh, that seems like it might be a typo too. Because I, I, SNTR was the original Ethereum ERC20 version before the UBX ERC20. So, and I could be wrong there as well. UBSN, yeah, see, I think it's just, but here we go. So the UBSN token is issued on the Ubix network platform, and this is the T10 Ubix standard. That is the native, so if this was the UBX, this would be the native coin, and this would be the token on the network. The main amount of transactions is planned to be carried out on the UBX platform due to the low cost of transactions, and that's kind of where they were talking the IoT stuff later, which is kind of interesting. To use the Ethereum network, Depository receipts, ERC-20 versions of the UBSN tokens, we mentioned that earlier, are issued, which can be obtained in exchange for UBX standard tokens, which is the UBX T10, this is the native coin. UBS SN ERC-20 tokens can be used to deploy records to the Ethereum network. And that's basically the same stuff that we kind of talked about. You need the right one for the right network and the right purpose utility so on right so after the number of tokens that is necessary for the application are transferred the tokens received by the smart contract are deposited and thus withdrawn from circulation in the future the developers consider a possibility of putting the deposited tokens into circulation purely for the purposes of the application's development or its market promotion and as far as i know these will be all held in the ubix vault as a but i'm not sure on that one uh exactly how the smart contracts are written so there, that's that's what we got. Uh, now, if we go, let's look at UBSN on CoinGecko and on CoinMarketCap. We have the Ethereum address right here. So now this is going to be when we looked. This is the UBX wrapped ERC twenty version of the UBX from your UBCurie. Okay, let me see if I can just give you one quick conclusion to wrap it all together very easily. I want to take my UBSN or my UBX from UBCurie, which is on the native 
network for Ubix, Ubix, right? And I want to go back to the Ethereum network and put it on KuCoin and sell it. We'll just say it like that. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take it and put it into your Ethereum, or you're going to have to wrap it to the Ethereum wallet from the Ubix native wallet, and then you'll send that address. So this address in the Ubix wallet is a T10 address. The address that you'll generate when you transfer over and create the wallet, and then when you transfer tokens to that wallet, is an ERC20 wallet sending to an ERC20 wallet. Hopefully that makes sense. So you gotta wrap, unwrap. When you take, when you buy, let's say you're gonna buy some UBSN on a, an exchange, and it's the ERC20 version, you're gonna bring that over here, and you're going to unwrap that from the ERC20 version into the UBX T10. And that's the same thing. So here's the Ubix wallet right here. Let's say that I went and I bought my million and I want to get the 0.1% daily compounded airdrops. And I want to get the staking rewards from the make me money soon to be Ubi stake. I would take those ERC 20s, bring them over to this wallet. I would unwrap them into the UBX wallet and then you know, automatically if I have enough and I've met the requirements for everything, I'll, I'll get the airdrops just by putting them in the wallet. And then to get the staking rewards, there's another step. You'll have to send them to the Make Me Money website. All right, what do you think? Did we get it? Hopefully that wasn't too bad. It sounds kind of confusing and it's a lot of steps, but really it's not wrap, unwrap. It's the same UBX, it's the same for UBSN, and it'll be same for any other token that's developed onto the UBX network. All right, the more you crypto, the more you know. I'm Joe. Cheers, everybody.